When ready, go. All right, so for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Pierce Giffen. I'm Ben at Hansi Devine. Uh, so our task for this summer was to build a lightning detection device to be used in the Terra project. Uh, the Terra project works a lot with uh, cosmic rays, some of their relation to lightning. So our challenge was to make a device that uh, could detect lightning accurately. Next slide. So these were the guidelines we were kind of uh, set out to make our device. We were supposed to detect a series of quick flashes of lightning, a uh, quick little 101 in uh, lightning is when a lightning flashes, when a lightning strikes, uh, there's actually several flashes. These flashes last about 30 microseconds and they're separated by about 30 milliseconds. So our task, so we were supposed to be able to detect all these flashes or at least as many as we could. Uh, yeah, and then the next thing was we were trying to figure out exactly how far away the lightning was. And we used that using a sound, which is this little thing, this little microphone. And then lastly, or not lastly, we want to send out a signal to other devices that are out there and then just store the data. We also tried to, uh, we also were supposed to uh, figure out what angle it came from, and we used, as we'll talk about that later, next slide. So for detecting the light, um, we used photoresistors. Uh, for those of you who don't know what those are, it's, we pass a current through the um, little thing down there in the right, and as more light is shown on the little photoresistor, it allows more current to pass through. So we were then able to, next slide. So we were then able to use our Arduino Uno there to read off the voltage for at, a, at any instant as fast as we could to see if there was a sudden peak in voltage at which we would assume there was a flash of lightning. Um, so our original setup, we just used this single Arduino board. You can actually go on to the next slide. Um, it's not an actual Arduino, but it's a very similar, similar unit. Um, and we used these six pins down there. And we pretty much just ran one photoresistor into each pin. So we were reading six photoresistors for our directionality. This method caught about 40% of flashes that we produced by a simulated stroke machine. So it was working kind of okay, but not really the way we wanted to. So then we were able to uh, get our hands on a MUX shield, which is this device on the top. And what it lets us do is, instead of reading through pins 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, at the same time it takes to do that, it can now read through eight. Um, it can now read through all six pin, all six photoresistors, plus an additional two, in around the same time um, that it would take to read through one. So using this method, we were able to capture nearly 100% of all the flashes we we produced by um, the Astro machine, and we measured our response time is about 15 milliseconds in between successive flashes of light. So 15 milliseconds, 15 milliseconds is the fastest that we can get two flashes of light. And since a lightning flash usually occurs 30 milliseconds apart, it's plenty of time to detect one flash of light, do some calculations, and detect another flash of light. So this is our setup as of now. Um, here we have the Arduino Uno, which we were originally using. Uh, this middle shield here is the uh, SD card board, so when we want to store our data to an SD card, uh, we plug it in here. This is the MUX shield. Um, if you remember the red board, it only had a few pins on it. But as you can see, the MUX shield has a row of about 48 pins. Or yeah, 48 pins and a lot of power and a lot of ground. So in this way, we were able to read uh, read more off of each photoresistor in the same amount of time. So we kind of color coded it. Each color rep uh, represents one of the photoresistors we're using. Uh, and the way we set up our code is that it reads through this in an acceptable amount of time. All right, so we, we also want to determine direction. So what we did is we set up so that each photoresistor, we also tested it so that it has about 120 degrees of resolution, you know, plus 60 minus 60. So that means, 
So since we have fo six photoresistors, we overlap them. So we have you know one point this way, one pointing at the next sixty degrees. You can go to the next slide. So, the the yeah. yeah. So this was um, our design. We don't actually have it with us, but so we had one photoresistor here, one here, one here. But as you can see, it's multi-layered. So if we were to have one here, and then, you know, 60 degrees out, we have the next one. And on the previous slide, it said how we calculate direction. If we look at two, one will have a higher voltage, or it could have the same voltage, but you know, one will be higher than the next one. It looks at those two and tries to find the angle in between them. And then here, you can go through. This is how, yeah, this is, we just look at each photoresistor, figure out which one's the highest, so we can find the highest voltage. And the biggest, biggest issue we're having that real quick is our code was originally really long and we our, we had our response time was way too long for what would actually be needed to be used in the field. So we the method we used in the previous slide was a very slimmed down version that allowed us to get within the five millisecond response time that we wanted. And then for once we got that we did a full 360 around it with the stroke machine, and this was the graph we got. Now, obviously, this is not perfect because what, what we would want is just the y equals x, so it would be just a straight line. But we did notice that there was kind of each, every 60 degrees, there was just this little bunch. And then this is it. So each 60 degrees, we have numbers. And then we found a correctional factor, and then when we applied that correctional factor, we ended up getting the final angle with about 10 degrees or so of error, which is a lot better than it was before. Right, before we were getting about 60 degrees of error, and it could be anywhere, and it was usually a pretty consistent error, but we weren't getting anywhere near the right angles. So determining distance, we used a sound detection device um, that we ordered a few weeks ago. So we used this microphone, and the way it works is we want to turn this on after uh, all the flash and lightning has occurred. So we set a timer in our program, and once I believe one second has passed before another successful flash of lightning, then we start. We turn on the microphone and start listening to its surroundings. If there's a sudden peak in. Uh, if there's a sudden loud noise, which we we hope is thunder, then it will plug it into a little equation, um, which uses the difference between speed of sound and speed of light and calculates approximately how far away it is. Um, and the microphone, since we had to, we couldn't really waterproof it. Uh, right now, if you go back, I think, two or three slides you know, to the picture, there we go. So this is the top view of our housing unit, and this is the bottom view. Um, so our plan right now is to simply kind of rest the microphone on top of this wire mesh, uh, this kind of grating here. So that it can still, air can still pass through, so sound can still pass through, but when it's raining really hard, it won't get wet and we'll still have a working microphone. So yeah, there's an up close picture of it if you can see it. Alright, so this is just setting up the signal. So before um, the way in which you are doing work is there was code where you can just say, on this pin, output a signal. And that works fine for a general purpose, but we wanted to go you know, as fast as possible because lightning is very quick. So here, this is another issue was how we were doing too slow, but we were able to go and find code where we communicate directly with the microcontroller and kind of ignore the Arduino, like the Arduino code that they wrote. We just communicate directly with the mic microcontroller and this got our speed down to five milliseconds, which, you know, is, and within reasonable time to calculate lightning strikes and lightning flashes and sound. So the goal of sending out a signal is that um, we can send out signals to other devices using the tower project. And while a strike of lightning is still striking, those other devices can go and study and record data based off that same strike of lightning. And with our response time, um, we are currently able to send out a signal based off the first strike of lightning, based off the first flash of lightning, by the other flashes, the other machines will be able to read and study the same flash of lightning. So then we worked with storing the data on an SD card. Some of the code was really weird for it. Um, the default kind of commands that they had us use 
we weren't really good for what we wanted to, so we had to go find um, another set of commands called the sdfat library. Um, currently, we are not able to um, do what it's intended to. Uh, the ideal goal would be to store a strike of lightning on a file with every single flash in it, then open another file for the next strike of lightning. But as of now, we're only able to store it onto one file, um, having some issues with opening multiple files. Um, but it still does work successfully. Uh, I think that's a good one more slide. So currently our housing, which you saw on some of the previous slides, is in the machine shop right now, getting resized so we can actually fit the uh, Arduino unit inside of it. Uh, so that it's waterproof, that it's kind of all in one place. Um, so that should be ready sometime around Monday, Tuesday. Um, fortunately, Tuesday through Friday, uh, weather.com predicts that there's going to be lots of thunderstorms here in Lawrence. Um, kind of had some issues with being reliable or not, but hopefully our goal is to come back here and test it um, for that huge four-day kind of storm, scattered storms. Other than that, uh, project is pretty much ready for use, uh, just some minor tweaks to some designs, maybe a couple constants need to be readjusted, but we should be good to go for the tower project. And I believe that's it. Are there uh, any questions? Yeah, I have just, just a couple of things which we talked a little bit about before. First is the um, can you remember what the minimum time is between successive triggers? 15 milliseconds. 15 milliseconds, okay. Uh, and then the second thing is that, uh, as you guys know, practically, before we can put it in the field, um, it's going to have to be compatible with the, um, so we're not, you know, we're not going to have it going to be plugged into an outlet that's going to be running off of solar, solar power. Um, have you guys made sure that, um, that you can power this thing with the output of the solar panels that we have in the field? Um, we talked to Stephen, and okay. we're not sure if it has an actual power source, but I think worst case scenario, we can just rip apart a USB cable at one end. Okay. Since it takes a USB cable. And the power draw of this thing is less than a watt. Yeah, I think it's... There it is. I think it's like less than 10 volts. I mean, yeah. uh, that, 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 that... 5 volts, I don't know. Yeah. How much water power is it? Some really very low power. Yeah, it's so. very low power. Yeah. Do you know Jess? Yeah. How much? No. It will power. Okay. I have a question about the sound detection portion of this. Um, so it's going to be in a case casing. Would the rain pounding on the casing affect the sound? because I know from experience rain pounding on a roof is fairly right. loud. How would that affect the detection? Well, as of now, we have a threshold that's very easily adjustable. So if needed to, we can uh, we can raise the threshold. If we're still going to detect a lot of low thunder, we can set up the same thing that we've been doing with our light detection system, is that we have a running average of background noise. And that if that running average increases by a certain amount, then we assume that that's a flash of lightning, in this case, thunder. Anything else? What are the practical applications of, uh, of this data that you're producing? Well, we're not actually producing any data. We're just going to help other machines produce data and tell them when to produce data. But ultimately, it's going to help us study lightning and kind of how they, um, kind of how lightning is related to cosmic rays studying some of the plasma off lightning, and I'm not quite sure about all the machines, what they do, but that's kind of the gist of what we're doing. All right, well, thank you very much.